how to practice as a video editor. Where do you find the best leads? I don't know. We're going to talk about it today. Also, we're talking about what's the biggest struggle that you're going to have as a freelance video editor. And finally, is VP Plus legit? And can you earn $5,000 a month? All those questions and many more coming up on today's Q&A Sunday. So what's going down, people? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're doing a and a I've got about 20 questions right here to rapid fire through. This is going to be perfect for our freelance video editors, perfect for anybody looking to build a career in the video editing, video production, freelancing marketplace. And without further ado, let's jump into it. What are the key habits, principles, or practices you attribute to your success in both video editing and business management? And how do you balance and integrate these skills to drive your success? That's a big one. What are the key habits, principles, and practices I attribute to my success? Determination vision, and just not take a no for an answer. Me and my boy were having a conversation the other day, and we said, listen, I think that everybody would succeed if they just went hard enough. They put enough aggressive action in a direction, and I think that's the key thing, is that the people who make it just don't take no for an answer. They ain't stopping. Doesn't matter if Moses himself came through and part of the Red Sea. They still wouldn't stop. They'd be like, no, no, mate, I'm doing this because it's my calling, it's my vision, and I do think vision played a big part, aka believing in the future state, but then my determination to not quit. So perseverance and vision coupled probably are, are the key differentiator between succeeding. And then the second part of the question, Will said, do you plan to make a course on growing an education platform like VP Plus? For sure. Eventually in the future, when you see the article come out, the Jack Cole has sold Video Production Plus for $100 million, then I will create a course teaching you how to do the same. Until then, you should join VP Plus and see the live masterclass of me building the business every single day, along with our incredible team over at VP Plus. Shout out to you, you know exactly who you are. Your advice for finding the right talent for your team or agency, how do you judge their reliability based on interviews and conversations. Now, interviews and conversations, you can only judge so much because people can lie and people can bullshit and they can inflate and they can exaggerate. You just need to give them a test. Ideally, the criteria you're looking for is as good, if not better than you. That's a very easy criteria because that means you're cloning yourself. And I would actually advise you to not cheap out with your talent. You shouldn't be looking for the cheapest possible talent. You should be looking for quality talent because if they're not quality, you're going to get missed deadlines, quality issues. You're going to be sending 100 pages of feedback to the point where you literally sit there with your head in your hands and you think, I should just be doing all this work myself. Why the hell am I even paying them if you have to give so much feedback? So I'd definitely be careful over there. Next up, let's go ahead and talk about how to not get scammed. Well, you do some due diligence on your client. It should be pretty simple. Now, if you can't do due diligence on them, aka they look the part, but you're still unsure, the basic principle you should apply is watermarking your work. You put a little 10 opacity logo in the top right-hand corner so they can watch and enjoy the video and review it thoroughly, but they just can't steal it. Watermarking has gone a long way to say a lot of people, but ultimately I would advise you to vet your clients properly in the early days. So you don't even have to feel as though you don't trust them and you need to watermark your work. It's not an ideal situation to be in. So vet your clients. Next up, Oscar, legendary new member of VP plus Oscar. You've been crushing it. You have three questions for us. What payment processor do I use? Which one do you recommend? Wise. Wise is absolutely incredible. I also use Remitly for, for my international freelancers, but Wise is my go-to. They have the best fee structure and they're just the easiest. I pay all my employees on Wise. Number two, do you have any tips on working? more efficiently in editing. Yes, presets, asset packs like Envato, they're going to save you a lot of time. And for new clients, usually the first video or two that you do is going to be a pain in the ass. You're going to have to piece together the assets and the flow and the pacing and just the style. And then the more videos you do for a client, the easier it gets because you streamline it and it's kind of the same thing repeated. And the third question is, how do you get into your workflow? Everybody has a different process. For me, deep work is something that I just let come to me. I don't actually go through a specific routine. I'm going to light my candle and I'm going to fucking sip my chamomile tea. No, just be disciplined rather than have to come up with a spell that you have to cast on yourself to do the work. How would I know if I'm ready to make the jump from learning to actually getting my first client? I just feel like I can always get better and I don't know when's enough. I've watched a lot of your premier course and I've spent a good amount of time learning. So if you have the skills to do what you're seeing in the polished video on the creator who you're watching's channel, then you're ready. Now, an easy way to get your feet wet, to dip your toe in the water, so to speak, is start doing stuff for free. Do value first outreach, go take a YouTuber's video, make Make it better. Take a podcast that's really bland. Make an edit out of it. Start tagging them in it on social media. Send it to their DM. And you'd be pretty surprised how quickly people will be very happy that you did that and like took the initiative to do work up front and they might even end up hiring you. So that's a good way to gauge how much interest or lack of interest there is in your skills. Do some free work. If it's good, they're going to tell you because they're going to want to hire you. So I'd start doing that immediately. Can you share some tips for efficient workflow management to ensure the timely delivery of high quality edits? First off, there's something that will enable you to get the work in 
on time every time, setting an appropriate deadline with the client. If you know the video is going to take a little while, give yourself an extra day or two. It's going to be done by Wednesday. You know you're probably going to get it done on Tuesday night, but just tell them it's going to be in on Wednesday at 6 p.m. You've got extra time, so give yourself some buffer. The funniest thing I see people doing, and I've had people burn out because of this. I've had friends who've had agencies that have been doing the 24-hour turnaround model because they thought that that was the way they were going to compete. Oh, we're going to do all your edits in 24 hours. And they burnt out and they quit their agency because who the hell can keep up with that on a long enough period of time? It's like, geez, that, that's too much. So set deadlines appropriately is the first way to hit your deadlines. Set your deadlines right. And number two is what advice would you give to aspiring video editors looking to work with experienced content creators and build a successful career in the industry? You have to understand that everybody wants to work with those successful content creators because they are the modern day celebrities, right? If you look at the numbers, it ain't people on Disney Channel that are famous anymore. There were YouTubers doing multiple X's more than traditional TV. So these YouTubers, these experienced, successful content creators that you want to work with, they are the modern day celebrities. So everybody wants to work with them. So what does that mean? There is a massive demand to work with them, but minimal supply because there's a minimal amount of big content creators, but there's massive demand for them. So that means you have to go above and beyond. You have to impress them. And the way you do that usually is going and doing free work up front to get their attention. So we had a killer in VP plus, shout out to Eshex, and he did value-based outreach and landed a client. There was a job on vouch.com for $4,000 to $8,000 a month, and everyone was just applying. Now, Shex took the YouTuber's video, edited it, and tagged them in that video on social media. The content creator saw it and was so impressed that he reached out and said, wow, this is incredible. You actually made an edit for me that's really good. While everyone else was just applying for the job, he took the work off the other people because he went above and beyond. You have to do something to get their attention, people. Everybody wants them. They're the modern day celebrities. You have to go above and beyond. How to practice as a beginner. Well, you should practice as a beginner using raw content. So stock footage, all that stuff's a waste of time. I'd actually just find raw content. I would find raw, unedited YouTube videos that are, you know, more like Sam Sillick style, more raw. And I'd also find podcasts and I'd rip that YouTube video and I'd rip that podcast and I'd turn it into your own edit. Now in Video Production Plus, we also have our practice project section. So you can actually download hundreds of gigabytes of real client projects that I've worked, that Cami C's worked, that all of our VP Plus mentors have worked and it's real projects. So you can actually take all of that and edit it up. So I would actually advise you to do that, but you have to be in VP Plus to do that. VP Plus is $34.99. I would highly suggest you joining. But if you're not going to join, then I'd go and I'd start editing podcasts. It's probably one of the, you know, more unedited content you can actually edit. And I'd leave that there. But real quick, look who's popped up on the screen. It's actually VP Plus himself. They said, is VP Plus legit? And can it really help me scale to $5,000 plus a month? I'm going to show you a little message exchange in VP Plus real quick, just to prove to you that you can make over $5,000 a month. Rain, one of our VP members, tagged Ja, who's another one of our VP Plus members, in a message the other day and said, were you already making good money before VP Plus? Because Ja's been killing it every day in the wins channel. Boom, 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 posting his wins. And Ja said this, he said, like $2,000 a month, max. Now I do over $8,000 a month. He joined Video Production Plus. He watched our courses. And most importantly, he came and participated in so many of our live sessions. We host multiple live sessions every week. We host a big community Q&A. And then Cammy C, one of our mentors who has a $25,000 a month video editing agency, he hosts a separate session every single week where he helps you guys, our students, build an offer like he's built to be able to command significantly high rates as a video editor. He's doing $25,000 plus a month with his agency. Joe's been coming to all the sessions. Joe's been asking the right questions and we've scaled his income 4X, 2K to 8K. Amazing. So that right there should answer your question, VP Plus. Was it me on the VP Plus account who wrote that message? I don't know. We'll never know. We'll never know. We'll absolutely never know. And we may as well just move on from this conversation before anybody else questions it. Cool. Where to find leads for editing as a video editing agency? Playboard.co is a really great website. We actually have full training on Playboard.co in VP Plus. But outside of that, I'd also advise you to be getting inbound leads. I'd advise you to be grinding social media, creating content that positions you as an expert, attracting inbound leads to you. On top of that, also you could go through the more like mononymous email marketing route where you go and get a bunch of emails off Apollo, you get your leads, then you clean them up, then you send it out there with instantly. You do the whole like email marketer campaign and you do mass outreach. However, I wouldn't advise doing mass outreach until you guys have a really good case study, aka you've achieved a good result for another big creator or another big client. And you can use that as the kind of reasoning to do your outreach with. And, and it's just far easier to get the ball rolling if you've already achieved a result. Landrina on the screen right now has three questions for us. Whoa, 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 whoa. It was one buddy, but I'm kidding. I'm actually gonna answer all three. Question number one, what has been your biggest motivator as a video editor that keeps you going? My vision for the future video editing was always a means to an end. I wanted to be a big content creator. I wanted to be a businessman. I was leveraging the video editing skills I had to build larger income. That's where I'm at right now. So the vision for the future was what kept me going. Question number two, is there any work slash job you do besides video editing? Well, I actually don't do video editing. I actually manage my agency and do video production plus. So I'm a creative manager, essentially, right? I'm more the strategist and the brain 
brain behind it and the kind of operations. But apart from some chops and cuts and some very basic stuff, I actually do no video editing anymore. And it's something that to a certain extent was a stepping stone to get to a larger level of creation, which I've reached right now. Finally, what platform is best for getting quality leads? Twitter, in my opinion, is absolutely best. All of the business people are already on Twitter. They're already part of the conversation. You have to create content that brings them to you or you have to go to them, but they're all on Twitter. It's absolutely fantastic. How outreach changes when you go from having no clients to having clients, how you can use the results you've gotten like X amount of views in your outreach. Well, you answered it for yourself. How outreach changes when you now have clients before you did, you have more substance and you're a better quality hire. Shout out to Cami C. Again, one of our VP plus mentors. He helps people build agencies just like he's built $25,000 plus a month. He actually has a course in VP plus breaking down his $25,000 a month agency and all the nitty and gritty. I advise you to join VP plus just to watch that course. It's an incredible piece of content. But essentially the core thing he teaches is getting a case study before you do outreach. He actually teaches going and doing free work for a creator to get a case study. And once you've got that case study, you can command a much higher rate because it's black and white. You've achieved a big result for somebody. You can then go sell that to somebody else. If you haven't achieved the big result and you're just saying, trust me, bro, it doesn't hold as much weight as, hey, I, Jack Cole, have built a big YouTube channel. I'll help you build one as well. Or I, Jack Cole, can show you a bunch of videos of clients who are saying how much our agency is incredible and how we've driven tens of thousands of dollars in revenue. We'll do the same for you. There's substance. There's a, there's a track record, which means it's more undeniable. So build a case study and you're able to command higher rates. Zada on the screen right now, work-life editing balance. Helpful tips to stay consistent, working 45 hours a week. Work-life balance is an interesting one because I never had any work-life balance in my early days. Like I, I worked every single day of the week. It was a point of pride to come in on Sundays because the little $200 a month office I was renting, no one was in there on Sundays and I loved recording. So it was even better to come in on Sundays because I didn't have people knocking on my door saying, yo, you're being a bit loud. What's going on in here? I'd even work my birthday. I'd even get booked in a nightclub on New Year's Eve so I could technically be working on New Year's Eve. And I will tell you that I had no work-life balance and it led to me having a lot of work-life balance. Now I, I do whatever the hell I want. I make my own schedule. I actually travel and work. I have excess income. We enjoy our life now. I don't know if I'd have gotten to this point of comfort if I didn't have a little discomfort back then. Don't let these, for a lack of a better word, pussies tell you that working too hard is a bad thing. Again, it's down to vision. W what's your vision for the future? My vision for the future was so grandiose. The place I wanted to be was so big that I had to fucking put all the work in. What I'm not going to achieve how delusional and big this vision is without doing a shitload of work, right? And my content and me as a, you know, me as an entrepreneur, me as a motivator, I speak to those people who aren't afraid of the work-life balance and who ultimately have a bigger vision. You will achieve more work-life balance in the later years if you go hard and have minimal work-life balance in your early years. But I actually did technically burn out because when I was young, when I was uh, 14 to 16, I worked every single day without fail building my YouTube channel, my gaming channel. I was, it's junk here. And I blew the hell up because I, I milked it and I had no work-life balance. I would just grind it, but I burnt out. I got bored of sitting in the house playing video games and I let my channel die. And I went out and I started partying and going crazy for a couple of years. I was still doing stuff. I was filming music videos, but I was also partying pretty damn heavily. So I now have a lot of work-life balance, but when I was 14 to 16, I had no work-life balance. Then I had a lot of work-life balance. Then I had again, no work-life balance. And now I have a lot again. So there's going to be seasons and you shouldn't expect a one size fits all. How to break revenue ceilings while scaling your business. Now, the easiest way to break a revenue ceiling is to be in demand. So if I, Jack Cole, am at $0 a month and someone comes and offers me $500 a month for a project that I feel as though should be two, $3,000 a month, I kind of have to say yes, because I've got no better deal on the table. I'm like, fuck it. At least he's offering me something, right? No one else is offering me anything. At least I'll just take this in the short term and then hopefully the future holds something more. But if I, Jack Cole, am making five, ten thousand $10,000 a month and I'm in demand and someone comes to me and offers me that save $500 a month that I think isn't worth it, well, I don't have to take it because I don't need it. So that's the way you increase your prices is you scale along with your demand. When you're in demand, it's easy to command a bigger rate because it's literally just take it or leave it. If you can't afford to pay my rate, no problem. We can't work together because I'm already booked. But if you can't afford to pay my rate, well, I'll work with you. Fantastic. Because I've probably got the team in place and ultimately I have the leverage. I, I say it all the time. Trump, the art of the deal, the person who's most willing to say no has the most leverage. What do you need to be really good as a video editor? Practice. Simple as that. You just need practice. Practice every single day. You're going to get better. The person who climbed Mount Everest once could climb it again and it'll be easier. I'm, I'm just kidding. That's actually like a once in a lifetime thing. You have to pay like $50,000 to go through the whole base camp thing. I wouldn't advise climbing Everest to anybody. Where do you see VP plus being at the end of 2024? It's a great question, Liam. Liam's one of our VP plus hustlers, one of our killers. In fact, Liam has been in this exact same studio before. In fact, Liam was featured in the last Q&A. Where do you see VP plus being at the end of the year? A much bigger community, a array of different mentors. The goal of VP plus isn't to build a Jack Cole fan club. It's to build the biggest video production school in the world. What does that mean? You don't sign up 
to a school for one professor, you sign up for the brand of the school. You join VP Plus, but you get access to a bunch of professors. So that's my major goal now is bringing on other killers and you can come give even more information to you guys. There's only so much I can teach you. The mentors are going to enable us to teach you so much more. Our first big VP Plus mentor is Cammy C, who has a 100,000 subscriber plus YouTube channel and actually runs a $25,000 a month video editing agency. Cammy is in VP Plus now as a mentor. He actually runs a weekly live session where he helps you guys build a more valuable offer that can command higher rates. So he's helping you make more money. He's charging certain clients $9,000 a month for a single retainer. He's teaching you guys how you can start to do the same. Every week he has a live session in VP Plus. Every week I have a live session in VP Plus doing Q&A, going back and forth, helping people answer their questions. Um, and Cammy C actually also has an exclusive course in VP Plus where he breaks down his entire video editing agency and how he built the whole thing and how you can do the same. Valuable content. I would highly suggest you guys to join VP Plus. Shout out to you, Liam, for the question. Um, and in fact, I'm actually going to give five codes away in this video completely for free. If you go down to the link down below and you click it and you sign up to VP Plus and you use code Q&A, exactly like it is on screen, you'll get 20% off your first month. I will see you guys in VP Plus. I'm actually going to recommend you to continue watching Q&As. The last Q&A was mega value as well. If you enjoyed this one, you'll love this one as well. Three, two, one. See you there.